Whoa, what's going on, everybody? Shout outs to everybody on Obstacles Opportunity. We're going to be talking about Tesla today. Unstoppable Tesla's dominance decoded. Shout out to Invest Answer. That's where we're going to be utilizing a YouTube channel. And they're going to be talking about the dominance of Tesla. Guys, everyone loves to hate Tesla. Let's get activated. Let's get into this. Let's see what they got to say because we're going to get some good news. We're going to do a deep dive. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. <laughs> I'm the guy that specializes in misunderstood assets, things like CleanSpark, MicroStrategy, Solana, etc. Also sometimes called the most hated assets. But about 15 months ago, I made a video just like this. Now, I love that he talks about underestimated assets. And what we look for in the marketplace, at least me, I take the Chris Calmio approach. He wrote a book called Laughing at Wall Street. And basically his approach to the market is being an observant investor, understanding the technology, understanding the company, understanding the balance sheet, understanding the innovation specifically, the research and development, and where they're going to be in the next 10, 15, and 20 years. We want to actually understand the company and where they're going better than Wall Street, right? We're going to have on the ground information. We're going to be able to understand the tech. Like there was many people who understood NVIDIA prior to its explosion, prior to it reaching $1 trillion in market cap, $2 trillion in market cap. People understood NVIDIA in their actual competitive edge over everyone else. A lot of people just saw NVIDIA as a video game, a video game chip producing company. That's it. Wall Street did not see the potential until they saw the potential of AI. Then they saw the potential of AI, but they didn't know what LLM were. They didn't know what their training, mo uh, training modules were like. So they didn't actually invest in it. And it wasn't until later that, boom, the hype came. Boom, it lowered the boom. And they understood what the company had to offer. So a lot of people now today do way more than what you see on financial media, where people are evaluating stock quarter after quarter, year to date year to year, and all these other short-term strategies towards investing, maybe hedge fund money, maybe a pension, maybe managing a big account. We're talking about retail investors and actually the media and information they need. So I like this company and I like these approaches because that's what we do. We are the observant investor. We're going to know about the technology. We're going to understand the company in their competitive edge prior to even Wall Street understanding it. Wall Street doesn't understand it until it becomes hype or until it shows up on the balance sheet. Literally just like this, about an asset called Solana. At the time, it was trading about $8. And uh, right now, it just nearly hit 150 today. So that's up 1,875%. Now, I'm not saying he started this. So basically what he's saying, he said he did this before in the past, and he did a great job, right? So a company he invested in started at 8 dollars and he really understood the company prior to its hype prior to it's actually ascending to where it is now which is around 150 plus per share so shout outs to him for that now let's move into the tesla story as a mind map as i do as the idea was tesla domination story i'm going to share this later on cyber bulls which i go record right after this but it was just too much it kept on getting bigger and bigger and more expensive. So I tried to break it down into just 21 points. I like numbers like 21, etc. And that's what we're going to do as well. Deluxe Bear, thank you for coming. So let's go and break down the points that I believe why Tesla has an insurmountable advantage. And again, go back, take a pen and paper, jot them all down, add your weightings and see if I make a good case or not. So first of all, they have the most innovative technology cutting edge EVs. They're known for their electric cars, but they do a lot more than just that. They have innovative energy solutions, AI driven energy solutions like Autobitter, and they are a leader in AI and soon to be AGI. People now let's take a pause there. He's completely right. Cutting edge EV. I really don't focus much on the EV because a lot of people are going to want to have conversations about it. And I like to kind of show people the other aspects and sectors that Tesla has massive amounts of potential. And this is where actually we're being the observant investor and seeing, hey, man, this is a category that's going to do damage in the future. And he talked about innovative energy products, right? He didn't talk about only 
the storage capabilities of the batteries, but also the software that operates the management systems, how they manage the energy on the battery, and also from the solar panels. So we have the solar panels, then we have the batteries. The batteries in high demand is actually a great margin above 50%. And then actually you still have the auto bidder, which is the artificial intelligence that actually utilizes AI that help manage, distribute that energy on those systems, on that system when we actually generate the energy via the solar panels, and then actually the what? The batteries, the storage unit, right? So let's continue. Allow him to explain more. People don't realize that yet, but that's going to be huge, okay? If, well, we'll talk about one other thing in a minute, but if they do nail that, they should have the equivalent market cap of a very big AI stock too. And what's also NVIDIA. So important too. They also leverage software and AI to develop advanced features such as autopilot, FSD, enhanced driving experience, collision avoidance, whatever you want to call it. And the integration of AI technology in Tesla's vehicles will enable them to do full safe driving. And many people do believe we're 99% there right now. Now, of course, a lot of people have issues with this taking so long for FSD to come out, especially with Elon being, let's say, very excited and his timelines are not completely accurate. But He's not producing the iPhone 18. He's producing real world artificial general intelligence. Real world, I add that on to on, on that to the actual name because it actually is robots in the world functioning and learning and maneuvering while they're in the actual physical landscape, while they're on the roads, right? Whether it's highway or city, these robots, cars, are learning how to drive and they're training themselves to become better. And it's going to take some time. But net-net at the end of the day, it takes 16 years for, at least in America, for people to even get their permit and start like driving in some shape, form, or fashion, even with supervision. And so with that being said, we can allow artificial intelligence to develop, right? If it's under 16 years, in my opinion, it's less than humans. So it's less than a time frame that humans actually are allowed to grow and develop, and then they're allowed to drive. So quite honestly, if it was over 30, 50 years, that would be different. And I can understand why people get fatigued at that point. But if it's still under 16 years, I mean, it almost sounds crazy, but let's continue. Also, they do continuous software updates. Everything is continually monitored, analyzed, and enhanced. Even things like the weight on the seat of the human sitting in the car, they analyze, it's bizarre. Their data advantage drives this. Tesla uses data from his vehicles to continuously improve features and service offerings and optimize the vehicle. For example, uh, in the Model 3, the new refresh Model 3, they added a little nudge on the pillar for side impact because they could analyze every time a Tesla Model 3 was hit by another car on the side, T-boned as they call it. They made it a lot stronger by just adding a little nudge. They have the data, and the data they collect helps them enhance vehicle performance, safety, and overall user experience. Man, how they go about correcting any issues and actually collecting data and then making revisions based off of those issues and those errors or accidents that happen is ridiculous, guys. This gives them another competitive edge, not just an EV. It's just also on top of that in how they operate their business. And they do this all around, and whether it's FSD, whether it's the manufacturing processing or whether it's how to actually create lithium ion batteries. I mean, they do a great job at collecting information and repositioning the company right after that. It's literally one of the best examples of trial and error and correction. It's the scientific method at display. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So congratulations to them on doing that. And he just mentioned that they have those skills and those capabilities and the data advantage is ridiculous. There's no one else close. You know how you always hear on CNN, the competition is coming. Well, when it comes down to this data, when it comes down to these training modules, when it comes down to this neural network, it's hard to actually find any other competition that's close. Mobile Eye is somewhere around, but net net, as far as the data that even Mobile Eye has is different. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Also, uh, they have insights from data collection to enable whether they should stay ahead of innovation and meet customer needs and demands. And there's talk of things like, oh, a car should do 500 miles on a charge. They have the data. They know exactly 
how long people drive. 99% of use cases. They also know the majority of people that drive in Tesla's drive alone. And they can measure the weight of all that as well. It's just no other car company has this. And the reason it's a complaint that the font on the dashboard for the handbrake was too small or something. No other car company could change that, but they could. That's why they were asked to just to be a pest. Anywho. They yeah, they had a minor issue with the font and it was over the air update, right? Over the air update, software update. Nobody had to bring the vehicles back into the actual factories or facilities, but net net, that was a big thing that happened in the media. But you know, media is media. They're going to do what they're going to do. Now, what are we going to do? Stay the course, right? Be smart. Don't be with the crowd that hates Tesla's just because Elon bad or Elon X. And he wrote a tweet that said X. We're not worried about that. We're worried about the underlying business. Let's continue to move forward. Optimus. They also have Optimus. And for those of you who don't know, this is going to be the biggest revolution to hit mankind that has ever, ever hit mankind. Advanced AI, machine learning, Tesla's expertise in AI and this that they've been doing for years now at self-driving cars can all be applied to the Optimus bot. Photons in, action out. And this will enable the robot to learn and adapt to new tasks quickly, making it very versatile and efficient. Also, their manufacturing capabilities will help them build high-quality bots, just like they build high-quality vehicles at scale. A lot of people are talking about them building 10 million, 20 million of these in the next one or two years. That would be incredible. And they will have an edge. They will have the best bot on the market. No doubt about that. They will have the scale. They will have the brain. They will have the neural networks that nobody else has at this stage. They also have energy and storage solutions, and they can integrate everything together. But this is coming, ladies and gentlemen. AI. And, and I want to add to that that he said it perfectly. They have the battery and etc. They have the neural network, and they also have the factories, right? They also have the facilities, so they could start implementing and utilizing these robots right within their own business model versus other companies that are solely creating robotics, right? They're creating, let's say, humanoid robots or any other different type of bot, and they still have to sign contracts with other companies that produce said products that have a factory line or assembly line, and then they have to have this memorandum of understanding. It's like a joint partnership agreement on, like, they can't just make as much changes because that's another entity in business operating versus when we're dealing with Tesla, and we're dealing with these humanoid robots, why don't we start putting them on the floor of our factories? We could change the factory. We could change the floor, the layout, how things are working overall. It's not two companies speaking to each other and trying to figure out how they, one, don't deter each other's goals, but also at the same time, it's just something that would be a more easier transaction or situation. It's gonna be easier to implement and utilize this technology just because it's just under one house, one company, and they own the factory. They basically build the factory, and so they can reconfigure it appropriately so that these robots can be more effective and efficient. AI is both terrifying and exciting at the same time. Not terrifying, guy, okay? So let's not be terrified because of technology. I'm pretty sure the plane, the car, and all these things were terrifying to the people from previous times, and it makes sense, right? But now today, Come on, guys. Let's not be scared. But be prepared. Now, battery technology, another advantage they have. They build, design high-quality batteries to contribute to the performance and range of its EVs. But these things will also be used in their Tesla Semi, uh, their other vehicles, their vans coming, uh, their Roadster, and their bots, too. And this will also extend energy to storage products as well. So you can see, you can see here it's five times more capacity, six times more energy, et cetera, et cetera. They are, it's been hard for them to build the 60, 4680s at scale, but they're almost at the tipping point right now. Also, so another good point, right? We create our own batteries. That's a vertical integration, guys. If you don't understand what vertical inter integration is, just go look it up in Google, but it really creates a better profit margin. And then it just makes more things effective and efficient if you have the right system processes. And we do at Tesla. The SOP is excellent, and it always is being revised. So let's continue with the next one, over-the-air updates. So over-the-air updates. If you have a Ford, if you have a Volkswagen, 
you will know that they can't do it. Tesla's been doing it for nine years and seamlessly updating their vehicles all the time. Every day you step in, every week you got a new car, new user interface, new capabilities, more range, more safety, etc. And you never have to visit the physical service centers at all. At least I haven't in five years. And this shows you Tesla's commitment to continuous enhancement and cut customer satisfaction through all of these new benefits, features, etc. Now, over the air updates. I mean, it's very convenient. And if anything needs to be fixed, especially from a software side, it doesn't need to be brought back into a shop. It could be just fixed over basically the internet, guys. So this is the amazing part about Tesla. So let's continue. A key part as well is vertical integration. There is no other company that is more vertical. Remember, vertical integration is what I said. But watch this. There is no other company that is more vertically integrated than Tesla. And I agree 150%. Once again, it has to deal with the systems and the processing. Guys, you can talk about EVs all day until you're blue in the face. You could talk about Elon Musk, but the process is ridiculous. I'm caught up in the process and the innovation and how everything works more effective and effective and smooth. When I was a Marine, I made a great system for us when we conducted drills. It wasn't because we were the best detachment. We had the biggest biceps. We had the best guns. We had the best embassy with the best layout and the physical security no it wasn't that it was we had the best system sop standard operational procedures or we had the best emergency action plans and because of that that's what made us the number one detachment in the region nothing else but the actual process but let's continue vertically integrated now we're talking a lot about vertical integration not only from a integration standpoint but also from a technology standpoint and a stack component standpoint as well. But you can see here, and this is old from ARK Invest from 2021, but literally. Literally, Tesla have their training, their computer, their self-driving computer, their neural network, their data sorry, labeling. Their super sorry, you guys didn't even hear me. Basically, I said everything here is vertically integrated. Excuse me for that. Let's keep moving. Simulation, the battery design, the manufacturing, the charging stations, the showrooms, the fleet management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. None of the other players do. Everybody outsources everything, and the number of vendors for places like Stellantis, Ford, GM, Mercedes, etc. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of vendors that all do disparate things, that all require different operating systems to run their technology or their component. And it's madness. The other thing that other car companies have been trying to do is direct sales model. The direct sales approach eliminates the need for middlemen, enables the need for a hard, strong arm selling, screwing customers, and it allows for very competitive pricing as well. And by selling directly to consumers, Tesla can control the sales process offer personalized service and gather direct feedback for, for product improvements. So that's a great part, right? We don't have to deal with crazy car dealerships, which can be a difficulty for a lot of people, right? Trying to figure out what the real price is for the product. What's the real price of tea in China? But, you know, with direct sales, you got it straight to the customer. No BS. Let's move to the next one. The next one is supercharger network. What people complain about a lot, the gas stations, right? How can you get the battery? You don't have any gas stations. Everyone hate Tesla. And they forget that the same thing with combustible engines. They didn't just have gasoline from the jump. Shoot. Rock, J, uh, you know, Rockefeller, he had to create the gasoline for the car. It took him a while. Then you had to build out the infrastructure. The engine didn't pop up all of a sudden. So it's the same thing. That's what happens with new technology. Let's continue. 
that. Then they have a supercharger network. This is, uh, think of it as fuel stations, gas stations, petrol stations, diesel stations, whatever you can call it. Convenient, reliable charging options for vehicle owners. They are all over the world. This is just the American map. And you can see you can drive anywhere, <laughs> literally. And you can just have the service you want. Now, the crazy thing about having all the superchargers is this. All of the other car companies, pretty much, with the exception, I think, of Ferrari and VinFast, have adopted the North American charging standard, which is the Tesla charging standard. And this is bizarre. So now all these car companies are going to go. It's like, <laughs> my analogy is, Tesla will own all the bars and restaurants. You know, and as Sanjay says, it's like him sending his patients to another doctor to get a prescription filled. Yeah, basically, I mean, puts them in a position to basically own all the gas stations, right? And there's going to be some changes, but net net, they own a good amount of them, right? They laid out the infrastructure. And guess what, guys? What's so surprising is that Tesla's supercharged network is really the top pick because the cost of actually producing the supercharged station is lower than it is with any other actual charging station. Because once again, the process is done off-site and then when they ship in the actual supercharger network and they actually are putting down the equipment and hardware it's very easy it's almost like when they're building homes inside of a controlled environment and they just ship the pieces to the site and build them on site very quickly versus building them on site from ground up it's off-site construction and the same thing is with these supercharged networks they build them off-site and then bring them into the site and it's very quick, effective, and efficient, and it keeps the cost low, and it makes it more fast. And so another great advantage. Let's continue. Brand recognition. Tesla's brand recognition is a top choice for consumers. There is no other car in the history of the world that has been more sought after. than the Cybertruck, and you have all these celebrities, got one. <laughs> and this means everybody wants one. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when the Roadster comes out? It'll be the same thing all over again. And the halo effect is imprinted on the minds of children. Like when I was a kid looking at the, uh, oh my God, I forget the name, the uh, the stainless steel car with the glowing doors. That left an impression on me. My dream was always to have a car with... Back to the future car, DeLorean. Glowing doors, because I saw that. I can't remember the name. Somebody, somebody will get it to me here in the chat. Oh, they were made in, uh, I think, Belfast. Anywho, moving on, brand recognition. Also, manufacturing prowess. Nobody builds like they do. They have what they call the machine that makes the machine. They utilize advanced manufacturing processes to optimize production efficiency and lower manufacturing costs. And the gigas play a huge role in Tesla's manufacturing operations, enabling large scale production of batteries and vehicles and mega packs and everything else. I mean, look at this line, guys. Look at this line, right? When you go back and you think of Henry Ford and you think about the line and what it looked like, just remember what it is today, the machine that makes the machine. And this is the added value. This is why we're different than China when it comes down to manufacturing. This is why China agreed for Tesla to have 100% ownership inside of China, the only company, not NVIDIA, not Facebook, not Apple, any other company, never got that type of privilege, only Tesla. Why? Because this level of advanced manufacturing is hard to come by. This is some TS stuff. This is some top secret IP, intellectual property. So congratulations to Tesla. And that's one of the advantages that makes the company Tesla stand out against all other companies. And nobody, nobody can scale like them. Now, I walked the Cybertruck production line for two hours with a good community individual i will not disclose who he is but uh literally the whole thing is automated from beginning to end just machines so i don't know what the union is going to do in there if they ever get in there anyway they're also a world leader in storage solutions energy storage solutions we have a ra radio radio um reactor in the sky that has unlimited energy we just need to be able to store it so we can peter it out over time and these products are versatile, suitable for residential, commercial, utility scale applications. And they have customers. Guy, this is the mega pack. The mega pack is the biggest move going into the future. I mean, everybody needs energy. I don't care if you're in real estate. I don't care if you got a business, you're an employee, or just even unemployed. You still need energy, right? 
unemployed and even the homeless needs energy, right? They might have a cell phone or something like that, right? But they still need energy. At the end of the day, everybody needs energy. And if we're selling great products, the energy storage, then we're making money. And especially, this is not only for sale for American corporations and American people and the public, meaning like public entities like the government, but also the globe. Energy security is one of the most primary things of a concern for nations. And when they go and see Elon Musk, they're always thinking like, oh my gosh, is it a new car manufacturing facility? No. A lot of times, Elon's having quick conversations about energy security and energy abundance. So these batteries, these storage solutions are good no matter how you're actually generating the energy. Solar, wind, turbine, tidal, whatever, geothermal, it still needs to be stored. And these are some good margins. And these, this technology here is amazing. It beats all other competitors. Out years into the future and they're building another gigafactory in shanghai just to build the mega packs like they'd have in lathrop california and they're already the leader and they're about to become a much bigger leader and this is high margin business high growth business and remember utilities the size of utility markets globally is 100x the size of the car market so think about that also they do solar products not a big part of the business but it's a challenge but they do have guys 100x 100x of the car industry so yeah it's 100x so competitors i don't care if they're rivian and lucid they don't have these different types of services and other products that they're selling products and services they don't have it so that's a high margin it's a 50 percent margin no different than the margins that we're getting from what's the company called ah nvidia nvidia has high margins right it has software operating margins but guess what we're also building a lithium ion refinery that has high margins also and it will help cut our costs on the battery storage come on man let's go this is why i said tesla is unstoppable have those and they're integrated things like power walls etc and there are customers already that sell their energy back to the network also while the competition is retrenching shutting down factories, cutting down production lines, cutting down hours. Guess who's expanding like crazy? Tesla. Tesla has established manufacturing facilities in multiple countries. California, they have one big one in Nevada. They're building out to scale the semi-truck. Texas, Shanghai, Berlin, Mexico uh, is happening very shortly or as we speak. And the company has also strategically based retail stores worldwide to enhance customer accessibility and their brand presence, as well as the superchargers, as well as everything else for maintenance and services. So again, it's a global player and they're everywhere. And their car, Model Y, is the best-selling car on the planet without any advertising. And it's a battery electric vehicle. Two things that have never happened before. Now, once again, that's a great, that's great also. We have factories all over. There's a new factory that's coming up online, hopefully in the next two years, underneath the two-year mark, and that's in Mexico. And once again, the cars are not only produced out of the factory, but also battery technology, just like what's happening in Shanghai right now. And so we have other operations that actually are going to help our bottom line. So I'm going to cover the rest of Tesla's dominance across the market in the next video. I want to keep this one brief. So everyone loves to hate Tesla once again. And so when you start looking at all these factors and still are trying to figure out why everyone hates Tesla, you can see that it's a conspiracy and it ain't just me. Is it a conspiracy or are they failing to hear me? Shout out to everybody. And I'll catch you on the next one, part two of the unstoppable dominance that Tesla has in the market. Shout out to everybody. I greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peep, peep, peep.